Hello, viewers. Welcome to May, June 2023. Wayek, also known as Wasi, past questions and detailed solution. General mathematics, mathematics core paper two, part one. This part contains questions one to five. Answer all questions in this part. Solution to five questions in one video. Question 1A. A car travels a distance of 112 kilometers at an average speed of 70 kilometers per hour. It then travels further for 60 kilometers at an average speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Calculate for the entire journey the total time taken. Solution. Speed is equal to distance over time. We are interested in time. If you make time the subject, it is equal to distance over speed. First journey, distance is equal to 112 kilometers, speed 70 kilometers per hour, time is unknown. The time becomes 112 divided by 70 and this fraction reduces to 8 over 5 hours. Second journey, distance is equal to 60 kilometers, speed is equal to 50 kilometers per hour, the time is unknown. Time for the second journey becomes 60 over 50 and you have 6 over 5 hours. Total time is the addition of the time for the first and second journey. That is 8 over 5 plus 6 over 5. You have like fractions. When you add, you have 14 over 5. That is equal to 2.8 hours. Question 1b. If S over Y is equal to 2 and Y over Z is equal to 3. Find the value of S plus Y over Y plus Z. Solution. S over Y is equal to 2. Multiply true by Y to clear fraction. You have S equal to 2Y. Now that we have expressed S in terms of Y in the second term, we have to express Z in terms of Y. So you have this term multiplied through by Z to clear fraction, then divide both sides by 3 in order to express Z in terms of Y. This is the given problem. S is equal to 2Y plus Y over Y plus Z, which is Y over 3. When you add, you have this result. So you divide the numerator by the denominator in this form. You can write the first term over 1. When dividing fractions, division sign always change to multiplication and you invert the fraction at the right side of the division sign and you have it in this form. When you multiply, you have 9y over 4y. Y cancel Y, you are left with 9 over 4.
question two. In football match, the tickets for children and adults were sold at 3D and 5D respectively. If 400 people attended the football match and 1,700 D was collected in tickets sales. A part of the question, how many tickets were sold to adults? B. Mr. Sonko sold 250 tickets. If 175 of the tickets were for adults, how much sales did he make all together? Solution. Let C represents children tickets and A adult tickets. From the question, the total number of children and adults who attended the march were 400. That is C plus A equal to 400. Total people who attended the football march. Then the sales made. This amount is for children. That is 3C plus this amount for adults 5A equal to the amount collected 1700 this equation is for total sales to continue you have to solve both equations simultaneously using any of the methods i'm using elimination method so you have the two equations one and two we are to find the number of adult tickets from the question we simply eliminate c children tickets to achieve that the coefficients of c need to be the same in both equations hence multiply equation one by three equation two by one equation one becomes three c plus three a equal to 1200 equation 2 remains the same when you carry out the subtraction you have minus 2a equal to minus 500 to get a divide both sides by minus 2 you have 250 tickets that is a part of the question B part total tickets sold by Mr. Sonko are 250. From this number, adult tickets were 175. The cost of one adult ticket is 5D. For 175 adult tickets, you multiply it by five to have the sales from adult tickets and that is 875 d children tickets are total tickets minus adult tickets that is 75 the cost for one ticket for the children is 3d for seven five children tickets you multiply it by three to get sales from children tickets and that is 225 d so total sales is the addition of the sales from adults and children tickets and you have 1100 
D. Question three. In the diagram, P, Q, R, O is an equilateral triangle of sides 18 cm. M is the midpoint of Q, R, O, an arc of a circle with center P touches Q, R, O at M and meets P, Q at A and P, R, O at B. Calculate correct to two decimal places the area of the shaded region. Take pi equal to 22 over 7. Solution. Area of shaded region is equal to area of triangle P, Q, R, O minus area of sector P, A, M, B. Each angle of equilateral triangle is equal to 60 degrees. Radius of the sector is half of the side of the triangle. That is 18 cm divided by 2. So radius is equal to 9 cm. Area of triangle P, Q, R, O can be obtained using this formula. You have 1 over 2 times side R, O is 18 cm. Side Q, 18 cm. Angle P is 60 degrees. When you simplify, you have this result and you have 140.292 square centimeters. Area of sector P, A, M, B is given by this formula. Theta is 60 degrees over total angles in the circle times pi times radius square. That is 9 square. This expression reduces to this. When you multiply, you have this result. After division, you have 42.429 square centimeters. Therefore, area of shaded region is equal to this area minus this area. Area of the triangle minus area of the sector. And you have 97.863. So, two decimal places, area of shaded region becomes 97.863. 6 square centimeters. Question 4. In the diagram, P, Q, R, O, and S are points on the circle center K. K, R, O is a bisector of angle S, R, O, Q. Angle K, S, P, equal to 41 degrees and angle S K R O equal to 80 degrees. Find a part of the question angle R O Q P B part angle S P Q. Solution a part of the question we are to find angle R O Q P that is this angle we can do that with the help of this angle so we have angle R O Q P plus angle R O S P equal to 180 degrees you have the reason but Angle R O S P is equal to angle R O S K plus one hundred 
plus angle KSP. This angle is divided into two sub angles in this form. One of them is known. So angle arrow SP is equal to angle arrow SK plus 41 degrees. This is given in the diagram. Angle arrow SK can be obtained considering triangle arrow KS. Arrow KS. In that triangle, the base angles are equal. You have the reason. If you add the three angles now, so here is S, here is also S, you have 80 degrees. If you add them, the sum is equal to 180 degrees. 2S becomes 180 degrees minus 80 degrees equal to 100 degrees. To get S, divide both sides by 2, you have 50 degrees. Back to this place, and that is what you have here. So you have angle arrow QP plus angle arrow SP, which is equal to this. This angle is now 50 degrees. So you have 50 degrees plus 41 degrees. The sum is equal to 180 degrees. You have it in this form. Angle arrow QP becomes 180 degrees minus 91 degrees equal to 89 degrees. B part of the question, we are to find angle SPQ. That is this angle. We can do that with the help of this angle. Hence, angle SPQ plus angle SROQ equal to 180 degrees. You have the reason. From the question, K arrow is a bisector of angle S arrow Q. That means angle S arrow K is equal to angle K arrow Q because K arrow is a bisector. In other words, this angle is equal to this angle. Angle S arrow Q is equal to angle S arrow K plus angle K arrow Q. This angle is 50 degrees. By implication, here is also 50 degrees. So, angle S arrow Q becomes 50 degrees plus 50 degrees equal to 100 degrees degrees. It follows that when you come back here, angle SPQ plus angle S arrow Q, now 100 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Angle SPQ is equal to 180 degrees minus 100 degrees and you have 80 degrees. Question five. A ball stands at a point M on the same horizontal level as the foot T of a vertical building. He observes an object on the top P of the building at an angle of elevation of 66 degrees. He moves directly backward to a new point C and observes the same object at an angle 
of elevation of 53 degrees. If MT is equal to 50 meters, a part of the question illustrates the information in a diagram. B calculate correct to one decimal place. Roma figure one, the height of the building. Roma figure two, MC solution. A part. Let's draw this as the vertical building, the top and the foot. A ball is somewhere here from the foot of the building. He observes an object at the top of the building, thereby making an angle of elevation of 66 degrees at this point. This is point M. So the boy moves directly backward to a new point C and observes the same object at the top of the building, making an angle of elevation of 53 degrees. This is T, this is M. So this length is 50 meters. This is the height of the building. So this diagram illustrates the information in question five. The solution continues. You have the diagram well labeled with all the sides as a part of the question. B, remember figure one, the height of the building. The height of the building H can be easily obtained considering right angled triangle MTP. This is the acute angle you have opposite the adjacent. That must be tangent. So you have tan 66 degrees equal to opposite over adjacent. That is the height over 50. Multiply through by 50 to clear fraction. You have 50 times 2.2460, the value of tan 66 degrees. When you multiply to one decimal place, the height is 112.3 meters. Roman figure two, to find MC, we have to consider the right angled triangle CTP. We are to get MC, that is S, but we need the information about CT. S plus 50 along the height of the building. But this is the angle we are working with. We are considering the larger triangle. That must be tan 53 degrees equal to opposite over adjacent. That is H over S plus 50. You have it in this form. Multiply through by S plus 50 to clear fraction, you have this result. To make S plus 50 the subject, divide both sides by tan 53 degrees. And you have it in this form. When you evaluate, you have this result. After division, you have 84.6 two six nine seven eight to get s which is mc transfer plus 50 to the right it becomes negative and you have 
point six two six nine seven eight to one decimal place mc is approximately equal to thirty four point six meters.